The Razorback basketball team suffers what would be a little bit of a setback against Auburn on the road over the weekend. We'll give our reactions to that game as well as where the Arkansas Razorbacks go moving forward. Also, Razorback football gets a couple of big-time commitments out of the transfer portal from Baylor. And also, why everybody wants Eric Musselman as their coach? It's going to be so much fun to talk about on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday and hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. As we know that uh, the new year started with a lot of things to talk about and we know Razorback basketball is really on the minds of so many of you, especially uh, with the game that happened over the weekend as Arkansas goes on the road to Auburn and loses by a final score of 72 to 59 in uh, what was a uh, extremely frustrating game for I know Razorback fans to watch. And I also uh, appreciate all you Auburn fans that are watching and listening into this podcast right now. Appreciate the views uh, because they were, uh, this was a big game for Auburn. They took this one very personally. Of course, I keep making the jokes about this game being Auburn Super Bowl because that was the joke from last year, too. And you could tell Auburn fans wanted this really bad. You can tell the Auburn coaching staff wanted this really bad. You can tell that some of the players from last year's team wanted it really bad. Like this one was personal to them because Arkansas beat them last year and they didn't ever got another chance to get revenge for that and instead lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament while Arkansas went on to the Elite Eight. And so they wanted this. Like it was very personal. Like it wasn't just something that was assumed. Like they had quotes of some of these players taking this game very personally. And the fans, you could tell they were raucous, all 9,000 of them or however many that they actually could fit into that uh, little stadium of theirs. So it was uh, it was a good performance, though, by Auburn. You got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, 9,121 people into uh, their stadium. That's awesome. So Arkansas just, uh, you know, once again gets to the – gets to the point where they go on the road and they can't get anything going offensively. That's really what this game came down to. It was Arkansas's worst offensive performance of the year, uh, or at least one of, one of the worst offensive performances of the year, where it should, honestly, like, it's one of those games where Auburn didn't necessarily play extremely well. Like, they played well. But, you know, Auburn only shot 43% from the field. They shot 33% from three, 77% from the free throw line. Uh, they did a good job of not turning the ball over because uh, in this game they only had eight turnovers and uh, they had 13 assists. So, uh, but they didn't, like I said, they didn't really do a whole lot of anything special necessarily. They just, again, I think that the the home crowd really uh, energized this basketball team into making this a game that they really, really, really wanted to win. I'm still not sure about Auburn being a top quality SEC team just yet. Uh, I think that uh, they still have a lot of work to do, and hopefully Arkansas gets to face them once again in the SEC tournament. But in this game, it was just Arkansas's offensive woes. I mean, 19 of 56 from the field. That ain't getting it done in any regard. You're shooting 33%, 34%, I guess, technically from the field. You shoot 12.5% from three-point land, two of 16 in this game. And without a doubt, the most disappointing things was the uh, the free throw shooting. As Arkansas goes 19 of 32, which is 59%, from the free throw line, they turned it over 14 times on only nine assists. And that essentially was the, the difference in the game. So losing by 13 points, like losing to Auburn on the road, I wouldn't have been surprised at all. Uh, in fact, I wasn't surprised at all when Arkansas ended up losing. I think it was the how they lost that uh, was the really frustrating thing if you're a Razorback fan. Because this is, again, showing the issues that they have, especially when they don't have their best player, Nick Smith, and they don't have one of their best players, Trevin Brazil. I know we keep bringing it up, but it is a factor. And, you know, they're still trying to figure out how to make this thing work offensively. But you can't go on the road to any SEC opponent and shoot 19 of 56 and expect to win. You just can't do it. Uh, you can't be Jordan Walsh going 2 of 10 from the field. Uh, you know, you can't go out there and go 2 of 16 from three-point land and expect to win on the road. But what's kind of funny about this is, again, 19 of 32, to me, the free throws were such a huge factor. Anthony Black played an outstanding game. He had 23 points in this game in 30 minutes. He had four assists, uh, seven rebounds, did have four turnovers, but also a steal and a block. 
So he played really well in this game, uh, was really the bright spot for Arkansas, especially offensively. Went 13 of 16 from the free throw line. And thank goodness for him, because besides him and Council, everybody else was pretty bad from free throw land. Jordan Walsh went two of four. Uh, Kamani Johnson went one of two. You had Mikai Mitchell go 0 of three. Jalen Graham go one of five. And, you know, you think about Arkansas and if they were just able to get to the percentage that they were at normally, and I think, which I think they're shooting around 73%. So that would mean that they would have to make probably around another four or five free throws with, to get to their average. So say if they made, we'll go five free throws. So they go, uh, actually, it's, I think it'd be 25 of 32. So roughly around there. But yeah, say they'll go 25 of 32. That's six more free throws, six more points. You go from 59 points to 65 points. All right, but you still lose, right? I guess you still end up uh, being down there by seven points. But when you go two of 16 from the field or some from the three-point land, if you're just able to make one or two of those, you have a completely different ball game. So that's really what it came down to is just the offense. I think Arkansas defensively did a really good job. I think that they had uh, like their defense is always going to travel. Auburn scored 72 points, which was, uh, you know, about what they average per game. So uh, I think but granted the amount of times that Arkansas missed shots, it opened up more opportunities for Auburn to, to go out there. Arkansas out rebounded Auburn. In fact, this is also another frustrating thing, too, because I bring up the free throws as being such a huge factor. But another huge factor was the fact that Arkansas had 17 offensive rebounds. So they just destroyed Auburn on the glass. 17 offensive rebounds. But second chance points, Arkansas had eight. Okay. 17 offensive rebounds, eight second chance points. Well, Auburn had only seven offensive rebounds, but you had 11 second chance points. So you are talking about a team in Arkansas that literally had 10 more offensive rebounds than Auburn, but three less second chance points. That's 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 not a recipe for success. It's never going to be a recipe for success. And so that's what this game came down to. This team has got to figure it out offensively. Uh, without Nick Smith, he's he's your true great offensive threat consistently. And I think that just having his presence on the floor makes a huge difference in these games. But when you kind of get into a point to where you become a little stagnant offensively, you can't figure out who's doing what. Like Anthony Black can take over a game, but I don't know if that's what you want him to do in these games. Like Ricky Council goes 5 of 15 from the field, and that's not great for him. But it really comes down with this team that they have right now, with these three players, uh, with Jordan Walsh, Anthony Black, and Ricky Council. I feel like those are the three guys that have to get the double-digit points every single game. In order for Arkansas to make this work offensively, those three guys have to get the double digits. It was like last year where it was J.D. Notay and Jalen Williams. Both had to be double digits. The year before that, you had to have Moses Moody and Justin Smith double digits. The year before that, Mason Jones, Isaiah Joe double digits. You have to have that in every game. You have to have two guys you can count on, and most of the time they do in some circumstances. But in this particular case, because of uh, you don't want someone to have the high – you're not going to have a high-volume guy like a J.D. Notay on this team right now or a Moses Moody, or Mason Jones, like those guys who can go out and just get buckets anytime they want. You don't really have that type of player, at least not healthy enough right now. So it requires about three people to where if you can get Walsh, Black, and Council to both get in the double-digit points consistently, that offensively is going to be good enough, I feel like, to win a lot of these SEC games and probably could have even won uh, a game like it is tonight. But the rest of them, like Makai Mitchell, you know, is pretty efficient you know, for what he plays. He only had six points, but seven rebounds. He missed three free throws, which was bad, but uh, had two blocked shots. It's like you you just don't you don't need him to score. Devo Davis was really bad offensively. You don't need him to score. You don't need uh, you know, any of those. You need you just need offense right now. The defense is great for Arkansas. You just need to find offensive guys. And now is that bringing in Jalen Graham to be a little bit better offensively? Uh, because he is a little bit more polished offensively. Maybe that's the case. Maybe getting in more minutes. Uh, Pinion played in this game too, and kind of like what I talked about. It's like just because he was great in Missouri does not mean he's going to be great against other teams. In this game, he played 15 minutes, shot one time, and was a three and missed it, and had one rebound and one steal, and that was it. Like I said, Joseph Pinion didn't really do anything. So you got to be able to start counting on some people to be better and more consistent offensively than what we're seeing. I know it's easier said than done, but I still believe that. Arkansas is going to be fine. I think that Muss and this team is going to figure it out. I think that Nick Smith is still going to play. In fact, I saw a tweet from Jeff Goodman, and I'll uh, go along with this one too because it's kind of what I've been hearing, is that uh, Jeff Goodman said that Nick Smith Jr. is going to miss the rest of January as he's rehabbing in Los Angeles. 
but he is planning to return in February, according to Jeff Goodman. As long as he's 100% ready, he is going to play in February. And that's, again, that's Jeff Goodman saying it. And so that's what I believe. That's kind of what I've heard. So you got to get him back. I really think that if Arkansas could just make it through this month still, you know, having like we got Alabama coming up next, which is going to be extremely difficult. See how that goes. And you have some other tough games in front of you too. But I just believe that if they can just get through January still with the, you know, having their head above water, still competing in the SEC, that with the return of Nick Smith, it's going to open up a lot of things offensively because that's all you're missing right now. You got really great defense still. You got uh, guys that are really gifted athletically. You got guys that can uh, come in and, and spell with some minutes. You got multiple guys that can go out and get points uh, at in a lot of different cage releases that are capable of it. But you just got to put it together. You got to get that offense. That's got to be the focus. And I know Mus is going to focus on that uh, here as well. So just once you get to that point, I think you'll be okay. It's just uh, figuring out, sharing the ball more, getting assist out there. You know, looking for the open man, and when you have open shots going out there and hitting them. Because I saw stats where Arkansas actually did a really good job of shot selection, uh, which, you know, there's different metrics that they go along with. Arkansas actually did better at shot selection than what Auburn is. Problem is they just didn't make shots. If you don't make shots, you're not going to win many games. Not make free throws. You're not going to win many games. So it's it's still not concerning as far as, you know, jumping off the bridge or jumping off the ship or anything like that. But it is definitely something that you, you can't do these performances. And I still think this team's – Figuring out how to go on the road too. You know, their first, their only two true road games this year, they've lost and they've lost when uh, to teams that I think Arkansas is still better than. Like, I still think Arkansas is better a team than Auburn as far as uh, talent wise and everything. And, you know, again, I we'll see if Auburn actually does something because it's again, they lost to Georgia and barely beat Florida so far this year. So we'll see if this game was just their, their, their Super Bowl, as I always keep joking about it, or if they actually turn it on and end up being great. But, I mean, this is just is just something that uh, we're, we're we're having to look through and having to see if maybe they can turn it around similar to what they did last year and get the offense going and figure it out. But I like their chances. You got Muss, and you got and anytime you got Muss, you always feel good about it too. But uh, yeah, just kind of disappointing there. And I mean, I got hit up by a lot of Auburn fans, which really cracked me up about that. You know, they were saying some of the most ridiculous things, like saying like they were uh, they were a blue blood basketball program, which tells me all I need to know about what they what their kind of program they are is like, OK, well, you obviously have zero clue what a blue blooded basketball program is. And I've never seen a school that crows as much about an SEC regular season title that they do. And I'm like, OK, but nobody gives a rip about SEC regular season titles when you lose in the second round of the NCAA tournament. So but it, again, it's fine. Like they they obviously like what they got going on in their basketball program. And which, again, they're not that great. They're, they're probably going to be. I don't know. Like if they, I think they're an NCAA tournament team right now, but they still got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of issues on their own. And so, you know, maybe they get back to that point, but man, I don't think they understand the concept of a blue blood. Cause I'm not even saying Arkansas is a blue blood. I don't consider Arkansas a blue blooded program. Like you got like going to a final four in the past few years and winning an SEC regular season title does not make you a blue blood. Like you got to actually do something and accomplish something great more consistently than that. While also, uh, you know, winning a whole thing called a championship. I think uh, Auburn's been to only like 10 or 11 NCAA tournaments in their history and one Final Four and one Elite Eight. So, yeah, they got some work to do before that. But uh, all the Auburn fans coming in were, were really funny. I appreciated it. I appreciate a good troll. Like they were they were really upset and, you know, kept telling, talking about their programs. And also another thing, too, and I'll, I'll end it on this because it's just, again, funny to me. Like they were talking about last year, like once again, bringing up that Arkansas stormed the court against Auburn because it was Auburn. And that's how they know they're a blue blood program. And I like Kentucky fans feel the same way. Arkansas fans feel these, like like basketball programs that are actually, you know, pro good programs and not just like been re relevant the past couple of years. Like they understand, no. It's when you play certain teams that you mean that means something more. Like when Arkansas plays Kentucky, that means something because of the name. But when they play Auburn, the only reason they rushed the court is because Auburn was number one in the country. Folks, if you think that Arkansas would have rushed the court last year if Auburn was number five in the country, you're insane. You're insane. Like this because they're number one. That's the only reason why. But Auburn fans don't want to hear that. They think that they're like a blue blood program in basketball. Okay. You just keep on believing that. And uh, who knows, maybe your, maybe your jungle crowd there of 9,000, really cute crowd of 9,000 people at capacity 
will somehow be able to watch your team actually make it somewhat far into postseason play. Because, la- yeah, you made it to Final Four, but last year you had your best Auburn team ever. And you lost to Miami in the second round. So, uh, yeah, just pump the brakes on all that blue blood program. Besides, Arkansas, they have bigger fish to fry than to worry about Auburn in this loss right now. They got to work on their offense and and, and get after it. And they got a tough schedule coming up. Because right now in the SEC, it's Aub- it's Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama and Tennessee are the best teams in the SEC right now, far and away. And I don't think it's close. And Arkansas plays Alabama in the coming I mean, this Wednesday. So it's in Bud Walton Arena. So maybe some Bud Walton Arena magic can happen, but they got a long way to go. There's no doubt about that. Uh, folks, as a small business owner, a hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team meetings and members and everybody that you surround yourself with on your staff. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. With LinkedIn jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by opening up roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve said goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your opening jobs when it comes to their targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post and company and their $875 million member profile to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. So LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions to apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked on Razorbacks podcast, a little football action as uh, Arkansas gets a couple of commitments over the weekend out of the transfer portal. And they are addressing some needs as, uh, you know, it, it's it's fascinating because there's a few things that kind of, I'm, I'm encompassing into this whole topic. Like one of them being, of course, adding some players, but also the reports have shown that Dominic Bowman, who's been the cornerbacks coach for Arkansas this past year, is not going to be retained. He's not coming back for Arkansas, which I didn't mind Dominic Bowman. I thought that he was a a guy that did a pretty good job at at the cornerback position. I thought that, you know, Dwight McLaughlin and then eventually Quincy McAdoo getting to that point was really good. But with a new defensive coordinator and a new defensive staff, this guy wants to bring his guys in. So I can't really blame him for it. Uh, again, if it's if I have no problems with Dominic Bowman, it's not that I thought he was a bad coach or anything like that. But I again, I understand why these types of things happen the way that they do, and why uh, Sam Pittman in Arkansas decided, you know what, we're going to let Travis Williams in New DC hire his guys because we know Marcus Woodson come in, has come in, and it looks like they're already making splashes when it comes to adding some dudes. So the first one, and what's funny, they're both from the same school out of the transfer portal. But the first one was Lorando Johnson, or as I'm going to call him, Snacks Johnson, because that's what his Twitter is. That's what he goes by, apparently. And it's Snacks, S-N-A-X-X, Johnson. Now, he's a cornerback that uh, is coming out of Auburn. He's six feet, 193 pounds. And uh, it was the day after he wrapped up his official visit with Arkansas. He's from Lancaster, Texas. And he's going to enroll in Arkansas later this month. And so they're really excited about having him on board. So he's been he's been there for a few years he, at a, as a recruit. He's a four star player coming out of high school. And he actually chose Baylor over LSU, Bama, Arkansas, Auburn, Michigan, Ohio State, A&M, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss and many others. So that's pretty good to me. And uh, as far as uh, where he's at in the uh, the transfer portal uh, deal, you know, he had a few offers here and there about where he was going to go. But uh, he redshirted in 2020, and then he saw action in seven games in 2021. And then this past season, he played in 12 of the ba- of Baylor's games with 16 tackles, a, h- a tackle and a half for a loss, a forced fumble, five pass up break pass breakups for the whole season. So he makes it public and makes it known that he is officially committed to Arkansas. And they got another defensive back, actually, from Baylor, this time it's a safety and transfer safety. I'm gonna try to say his name right. Alfium Walcock. Walcott. Walcott. So uh I can call him Al. Apparently is what he goes by. So Al, it's a lot easier to say. Al uh, Walcott. A 6'2, 219 pounds, and he's a senior. And he went public with this decision actually on Sunday after once again wrapping up a visit 
official visit to Arkansas. He says the reason he's coming here is because the coaching staff, these guys are genuine. They kept it real with me from the jump since the first call. I really think they could develop me into the next level and prepare me to get there. So this is pretty great because uh, Walcott posted 82 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, two sacks, three forced fumbles, an interception, and four pass breakups in 13 games this past season for Baylor. He was recruited by Marcus Woodson uh, to come up here out of the transfer portal. And he's just been uh, flying high about Arkansas and the type of energy that they bring. So, you know, you think about the cornerback with uh, with Snacks Johnson, that's going to be helpful. And because Arkansas is still going to have Dwight McLaughlin back, Quincy McAdoo back. Uh, they're trying to add some other pieces in there, too, as far as uh, guys that will be returning and finding roles that are already on the team. But you feel like Snacks Johnson is going to be into the mix as far as finding rotations there in the quarterback position. And then on the other side of it, with, uh, with the safety, because that's, to me, the cornerbacks were a need, but this type of situation with safeties was a desperate need. Arkansas desperately needed safety. Safeties were so bad last year, and I think that Walcott is going to be a difference maker. I mean, let's be honest. It, it's not like something where he was a backup player for Baylor and he's coming in. I mean, he was a starter, a, and he's a senior. You know, he's an experienced guy in a major power, power five conference and was also part of a team in Baylor that last this past year, I know they weren't as great, but two years ago, they won the Big 12 and were having an incredible year. And the fact that he had 82 tackles and two sacks and an interception, three forced fumbles, 10 tackles for a loss, four pass, up break, uh, pass breakups, shows that uh, he's a guy that's going to step in right away and make a difference. Like already, they are better. Already, they are better at safety. By getting this one player, they are better. And I think a cornerback, if they can continue to add some guys to the mix, they'll be better. If they can get another safety, I, I mean, I'm not saying they have to or, or anything, but if they can just have some sort of formidable thing as far as the other safety back there, because I think Woodson's going to do a phenomenal job with the defensive backs in the secondary. And I think he's going to coach safeties. We'll see if he coaches safeties and cornerbacks, because, again, with Dominic Bowman moving on, we don't know what direction they're going to go. But I really like these additions. I think they're going to be great for Arkansas. And I think that they're moving in the right direction, addressing these needs. So we'll see if uh, they can continue to make that happen and to, to build up this team. But uh, again, improvement is important. And right now, already, they're better at safety for sure than what they were this past year. Uh, we'll talk about a final thing about basketball here in just a second. First, I got to tell you about betonline.net being your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. So you can get the latest odds and trends from every professional and amateur league out there. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball to the World Cup, they got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more over at BetOnline, where the game starts. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, you know, we, we know that basketball right now was uh, going through a tough loss with, uh, you know, the Auburn team that they lost to. And then, you know, they're trying to still have a lot of things going on. So they're not really concerned about any of this. But I just thought it was an interesting topic that uh, the whole thing with Chris Beard being fired from Texas and was uh, not shocking considering what he uh, not only allegedly did, but what it looks like he did down there in Texas, it all made sense. And then people start talking about, all right, so what direction are, are, is Texas going to go? Who are they going to talk to? Who are they going to call? Whatever it may be. And honestly, uh, I saw so many people talking about, oh, well, first call they got to make is to Eric Musselman at Arkansas. And then there were some people that were saying that just because, yeah, it would be a big name. But then a lot of people were like, well, he's not going to do that. Like, Musselman's is not going to leave Arkansas because Arkansas is a better job than Texas. Now, I don't know, maybe he'd leave for Auburn. But... They, they, he's not leaving for Texas. So that's not even an issue. That's not even a, a thing that's going on. But I, I feel like it's just so great, though, when any time that some sort of basketball program's job opens up, and it doesn't even have to necessarily be a blue blood program because Texas is not a blue blood basketball program, but they are a program that has a lot of money, a lot of support, and can go and hire a high-quality coach. That's why they hired Chris Beard. Like, they can do that. That's kind of shows you that when they're that type of program that opens up and everyone's saying, well, the first call has to be to Eric Musselman. It shows you that people really, really want what you have. They want, they see the high level success that they're having at Arkansas and why he is a game changing type of coach. You know, I, I saw people say maybe Nate Oates is another person because I, like as far as coaches that are established in the sec, the only ones that were brought up was Eric Musselman and possibly Nate Oates. And uh, you know, 
the reason behind that again is just because of the high level coach that they are. And maybe they could, you know, find some way to pay at a high level, but Muss is not going to leave Arkansas for, for Texas. Nate Oates may, who knows if they offered him the job, he might be interested in it. Cause I think Texas is a better basketball job than what Alabama is, but still it just makes you feel really good about the fact that people want what you have. And that's what Arkansas has with their basketball program is that they have a coach that a lot of people want. And I was talking to uh, not only some college basketball national guys, but also some guys that, uh, you know, cover other teams specifically. And that was one of the things that they brought up is saying, hey, this is just shows you how, you know, this is the guy that they would want. And we know he's not leaving, but still, you got to at least make the call. You got to at least try. And so. That was just something I thought was really cool and unique where everybody wants your coach. And I've always felt like that anytime you want to see how good of a coach you have or how good you have it in any program is look around the league, look around college basketball in general, and look at if you're a Razorback fan and you have Eric Musselman, how many coaches out there right now in college basketball would you trade for straight up? Like right now, straight up, trade your guy, Eric Musselman, for that guy to come in and coach your program. There's To me, there's not any. Some of you may say, well, you know, Bill Self has been really good and highly successful, or, or maybe like a Scott Drew, because he's down there at Baylor and was won a title here recently. And that maybe may be able to hear arguments on that. But besides that, folks, there is not a single coach out there that I would trade Eric Musselman for. I wouldn't. And I think a lot of fans feel the same way. And that's when you know you have something great going on because you look on the other shoe being on the other foot. You know how many programs right now in basketball would trade their coach for Eric Musselman? You have any idea? The vast majority of programs out there, the vast majority. I think there's Kentucky fans right now that would trade John Calipari for Eric Musselman right now. I believe that. I believe it's the same thing with, you know, just pick a different, uh, you know, high level college basketball program. Would there be somebody out there that would trade John Shire for Eric Musselman? I'm not saying a lot of them would, but a lot of Duke fans would be like, well, man, you know, because John Shire is kind of an unknown. Or what about uh, old boy over there in North Carolina? Like they like what he's doing, but still it's like they wouldn't, they wouldn't say completely and totally no right off the bat. A lot of them wouldn't, at least the ones I've talked to. So just uh, remember that you got a really good thing going on with Eric Musselman and you got something that everybody wants, but they can't have. It's not at this point in time. So I, again, I, I love Muss. I trust Muss. I think Muss is going to get this thing rolling here in a bit as the season goes on. And Arkansas is going to continue to have a fun uh, February heading into March, especially. I just can't wait to see uh, when it all comes together. And I really can't wait to see when Nick Smith comes back. I still believe he will. I'm not guaranteeing it, but I still believe he will at some point in time. So we'll see how that plays out. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you.